Well, the health department has called on the public to be vigilant and exercise good personal hygiene habits. As you've heard in that clip now, after the country recorded imported cholera cases attributed to the two sisters who had been in Malawi. The sisters traveled to Malawi last month where a cholera outbreak has already claimed over 1,000 lives. Now, let's get an update. We are now joined via Zoom by Dr. Michelle Groom, and she's the head of the Division of Public Health Surveillance and Response at the National Institute for Communicable Diseases. Dr. Groom, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Uh, give us the latest, you know, and as far as this case is concerned, you know, we have only heard about the two sisters. We understand that there could be possibly a family member who's also going, um, so I'm going some tests, you know, just give us the, the latest on this. Yeah, so thanks very much and afternoon to everyone. So as you've correctly said, we've got the two laboratory confirmed cases and part of our um, response to um, confirmed cholera cases in South Africa um, is for the department to, um, to contact uh, the immediate contacts of the cases. Um, and so in this case, a, a family member also exhibited symptoms and we did take um, a, a, a stool test. So that's how we detect cholera. And so we are awaiting uh, those results. So so nothing further to update at the moment. Um, but I think really just to, to raise awareness, Malawi and Mozambique are both having large cholera outbreaks. In fact, there's 14 African countries and several other, Af uh, several other um, countries globally that are, are experiencing cholera outbreaks. And so we really are at high risk, especially from our neighboring countries um, with people traveling um, to Mozambique and Malawi that you know there may be further imported cases. How worried should South Africans be? I mean, especially if you consider how well our systems are in as far as monitoring, particularly at ports. Yeah, so I think, uh, I mean, there may be you know, coming in through various um, of our borders. Mm. And I think really just to be vi to be vigilant in terms of um, monitoring for diarrhea symptoms. I think cholera is not the only um, bacteria. Um, there are other bacteria and viruses that can cause diarrhea. Um, but I think cholera in itself causes quite, can cause a severe diarrhea and um, lead to dehydration. Um, and I think with, um, with the risk of imported cases, I think we do just need to be on the lookout for this. I mean, there's been a number of cases, particularly at schools, of, you know, children showing signs of some form of tummy bug. And I think it started just as, you know, mm. as soon as the schools opened and one would obviously be alarmed at this. So just a reminder us again, what are some of those symptoms that we have to look out for, uh, particularly if you are just a layman and, and you cannot necessarily detect uh, dehydration as an example? Yeah, so I think really just obviously we've detected these two imported cholera cases, but really to just to be aware um, that in the summer months, you know, there are many other causes of, of diarrhea, um, and especially amongst young children, diarrhea is very common in children under five, um, especially from viral infections. Um, and so in the beginning, the, you know, diarrhea is a, is a common feature of many enteric infections as well as vomiting. Um, and so I think not all of these will be attributed to cholera. I think at this stage, I think we really are looking for people who've had a positive travel history, so have traveled to a country which is experiencing an outbreak. Um, so I think just in terms of general management of diarrheal infections, really important, especially in young children, they are the most at risk of severe dehydration, which can lead to death. Um, and so if children are not able to take any fluids um, orally, so usually we would um, begin with oral rehydration fluids, um, if they continue to vomit and to have severe di diarrhea, I think it's really important for parents to take their children to, to um, their healthcare worker um, for further assessment. Just going back to these two lab, you know, confirmations, uh, we know, of course, that the travelers were traveling via bus from Malawi. You know, what, um, what is the likelihood that we could be looking at, you know, more cases being discovered over the next couple of days? 
Yeah, so definitely, I think we, we've been aware since the, the outbreaks have been declared in um, Malawi and Mozambique that there is a risk to South Africa. I think we do have um, persons and South Africans um, and foreign nationals traveling between the countries. And so there's definitely been a risk. So it's not unexpected that we had these imported cases. Um, I think just to make sure that we can contain it, really important that we do identify these cases early. Um, and so if, if um, people are experiencing symptoms and they have recently traveled to these countries, really important that they do seek medical care. Um, and I think just general hygiene practices, you know, washing hands after using um, the toilet um, before preparing food, I think these are really um, measures that we know can work in any diarrheal outbreak and to contain an outbreak. Uh, when does the country declare it an outbreak? Because I remember, uh, you know, Almost a decade ago, you know, South Africa had an outbreak mm -hmm. of about 12,000 cases. And that was, you know, yes. from an outbreak in, in, in the neighboring uh, country, Zimbabwe. Uh, you know, so when would, you know, you be more concerned um, as South Africa? And, and what are some of the key lessons that you've learned from that outbreak? Yeah, so I think at this stage, I mean, imported cases um, is, you know, they got the infection well in Malawi in those two cases. Um, and so we really are on the lookout for transmission within, um, you know, further secondary contact. So where one of those cases will then um, transmit cholera to further cases. And cholera is spread by contaminated water and food. Um, and so if we're seeing signs that, you know, um, it's not just direct contacts, um, but that it, there's an indication at maybe from a, a water source which has been gun, become contaminated, I think that would raise a, a lot more concerns. Um, obviously, learning from, from the past and even from, from our recent outbreaks, I mean, we've got an ongoing measles outbreak. Um, we've just come through the, the COVID-19 pandemic. And I think really is attention um, to, to hygiene um, and just to make sure that in, in terms of those contacts or anyone who has diarrhea symptoms is really to perform good hand hygiene. Um, especially in areas where there is um, perhaps um, limited lack of um, to clean water and there may be um, limited sanitation. And especially in these areas, I think really to be very vigilant in terms of, of um, good hand hygiene. And um, I think if you are worried that you're in an area where you may not have access um, to, to potable water, I think just to, to boil your water then before drinking. Dr. Agroom, thank you so much for your time. That's where we leave it for this afternoon. Of course, that was Dr. Michelle Groom, and she's from the National Institute for Communicable Diseases.